Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to launch the Mars Fuel Depot that we've got planned for this Earth to Mars window in 37 days. But looking at our contracts I decided that we need to work on some other things. Of course we've got a Jupiter flyby mission and a Saturn flyby mission. Those we have some time for. The position a satellite in stationary orbit around Jupiter is going to take some, some doing. But that's in 20 years really. So we've got time to figure that out, but that's going to take a lot of Delta V. Um, and fortunately, it doesn't uh, hit our reputation too much. We just got that back up again. The Jupiter flyby mission will really boost that, but that mission is going to arrive in more than a year, so it's going to take a while. Uh, we do have a possible way of getting more funds, because uh, even though we have a lot of funds, I, I would like more funds, because then we can do uh, more upgrades to buildings and such. Uh, so the best contract I see here is this human orbital 3 to LEO. Um, it only gives us 173 days to figure it out but I've checked and we do have capsules available to do this. Um, also there's a successful re-entry suborbital um, so we could probably pick that up just for the heck of it. Uh, because that'll just be coming with this particular mission. I think we could do that. Um, I don't know whether we should... Yeah, I guess we'll build uh, this mission in the second slot while the Mars Fuel Depot is going on. Speaking of things we could use uh, credits for or funds for, uh, boosting up the build time on the second slot would be good. Um, yeah, so I think there's nothing else that's really comparable as far as funding. Uh, even this position of satellite in a specific orbit of the moon is only uh, 200,000 total advance and completion. This is 800,000. And just going down the list, there's nothing much that's of any interest at all, uh, except for landing on the moon again, but we'll, we'll hold off on that one. Uh, lunar impactor isn't that great. So yeah, I think uh, I'll take the successful re-entry in a year and uh, human orbital. And this is what we're going to do after the Mars Fuel Depot. But let me uh, go to the VAB and show you the pods that we have uh, available to do this. Okay, so it's an interesting twist, but taking a look at the Apollo Command Module, the entry cost is 350000 I'm not too sure what the, the final cost will be here. Uh, I, I think maybe we can see that in the, in the tech tree. Maybe we should go and check that out. But the Apollo Command Module is 350000 And the reason why I say that's an interesting twist is because our other options are the Mark II pod, which is a million to unlock. And then this uh, TKS VA Command Module, also crew capacity of three, which costs 600000 Now, this VA Command Module is lighter than the others. It's 3.5 tons. So that's pretty attractive. Um, this is four tons. And the Apollo Command Module is 5.5 .5 tons or thereabouts. I don't know. I mean, uh, well, I, mean, I think I assume they all have built-in RCS. Uh, it's probably got some MHN204, some stuff like that built in, and it's got an ablator, so it's got its heat shield uh, built in. That's nice. I don't think this Mark II pod has the heat shield built in. Let's see if it has ablator or not. No, there's no ablator on this, so that that's probably why it's lighter. How about the VA command module? The VA command module does have ablator, but it doesn't look like it's much. It's not like, a, I think that's more like Earth orbit, but that's sort of what we want it for. Uh, but it doesn't look like it'd be like a lunar, lunar re-entry kind of thing, and I would like that kind of buffer. Also, it's uh, carrying less food, water, and oxygen, and... I don't see any any fuel for the RCS thrusters. In fact, I don't see an RCS thruster configuration on this by default. CO2 scrubbers there, but yeah, there's no RCS on it right now, so we'd have to add RCS separately. So that's something to consider. Let's take a look at uh, if the tech tree has the final cost and not just the entry cost. Okay, so mature capsules and it shows one million here for the well, I, I think that's just the unlock cost I don't think yeah it doesn't show the the final cost of the part unfortunately 
that makes it harder to plan. But maybe if oh, and we do have to get the forward heat shield for the Apollo command module. That's another seventy thousand to unlock, but that still makes it cheaper than the others. And you know the parachutes and such. But it's nice that it comes with its own parachutes. That's convenient. Float rings. I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna put the float rings on. We'll have to see. That's an added cost. And float spheres too. I think I should uh, reassess which mods I have in here. I think there are more mods compatible with RP0 than I actually have in here. Um, so I'll have to take a look at that because we are certainly missing certain things that should be available to the general, you know, uh, the broader range of space programs than what we've got now. All right, so I'll get building and I'll come back to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so may I present our new spacecraft, the Orpheus spacecraft built around the Apollo command module. Turns out they're pretty cheap once you uh, get the unlock done. It's only 9,400, call it, uh, cost there per module. I don't know what the other ones are, but the unlock cost is so severe on the other ones that I'll just take this. I hope it'll work out for us. Uh, there's a lot to talk about as far as the Orpheus spacecraft. Right now it's on the Nico 606. It is not fully fueled uh, and this is how it would be in Earth orbit. We wouldn't fuel, fully fuel it. Even not fully fueled it has 1,082 meters per second and uh, we have plenty of buffer on the launcher to uh, deal with any sort of loss of engine or something like that. You can see uh, about 10,300 meters per second in the launcher uh, before we even get to the spacecraft itself and this has a thousand but that's only with this tank filled this tank here is currently empty and that is to not overburden our Nico 606 but on a larger launcher we could potentially fill this up and oh, of course unlock it and you can see 3,122 meters per second if we want to burn the Astros 2 engines for 11 minutes and 51 seconds. Uh, if you want a more modest burn time, say of 8 minutes, uh, we could get 2,460. But the idea is that this can handle moon missions easily and perhaps uh, carry a moon lander as well, dock with a moon lander, you know, like Apollo style. So it's quite capable of doing that, but we're not going to do that on this test launch. Uh, it is also capable of being completely automated if nothing interferes with that because it's got a Thor AVNS unit on the tail there. That also ensure that I didn't have the procedural tank interaction that leads the stuff to get separated apart. And also uh, we have a Delta Avionics package up here because once we separate off the service module we still want to be able to test its ability to re-enter and we are going to do an uncrewed test of this first. I decided not to uh, unlock the stock, uh, I mean the FASA, let's say, um, Apollo escape system, which is here. It's another 175,000, so that's a downside. It's a little bit heavy, that's another downside. Uh, but more importantly, I wanted to be able to fit this androgynous Apollo docking system instead of the, the what you call it? Uh, two-part one, the Drogue and the Probe, because I really don't like the Drogue and the Probe and I don't trust them. I suspect that they might not dock properly, whereas at least with the Apollo docking system, this one, I have some faith that will dock properly. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than the Probe. The Probe is only 0 0.036 tons. The Drogue is 0 0.2 tons for some reason. Uh, it's much heavier. But uh, yeah, playing the Apollo docking system is certainly not doing us any favors as far as mass is concerned. But I, I like it better. And also, we're going, we were going to put this Delta Avionics package. I hope that this uh, Ford heat shield does not mind having the Delta Avionics package and the docking system there. There is another issue in that the command module uses MMH and N204 for its uh, RCS thrusters. And our, the rest of our system uses Aerozine and N204 which is actually what the Apollo uh, CSM used, of course, uh, but the Apollo CSM also had MMH for the RCS. So it's a bit complicated. We're going to keep this locked uh, so that we have that on re-entry. I don't know how much we'll need on re-entry or whether the RCS thrusters are good for that or not. We will have to see. Yep, uh, so some question marks there, and that's why we're going to attempt to launch this uncrewed. I don't know if we'll be successful on that particular 
uh, test attempt, but we'll see. We have the abort system configured, and so it is a sort of haphazard abort system. It uh, does more than 6Gs, it's uh, closer to 7Gs um, with just the command module separating from here. And so that should be all right. That's that's good enough for me anyway. Uh, we'll be we'll be good. All right. So that's the idea. And otherwise, Nico six hundred six is unchanged at all. There's no changes to the Nico six hundred six, and it'll take us thirty eight days to build this. So that should be good timing. We should be able to build a couple of them before the contract runs out. Um, obviously, we're not going to be putting any crew, but that selection happens later anyway. So uh, again, four Asterisk engines on the service module instead of the large AJ-10 that the, the service module engine that the Apollo had. I've called it Orpheus because Orpheus was a child of, of Apollo, and this is sort of the same way. Okay. By the way, we do have uh, two Kelly 4s being built, one on a 606, one on a 404. We don't have a contract to do anything with them just yet, so we're just going to leave them be. I didn't leave anybody. No, we've just lost Jeb, that's all. Everybody else is ready to go. So, yeah, uh, they're not going to be able to be a rescue vessel for this, but, I mean, we don't always need to send three people or three Kerbals out on a mission, so th they'll be good too. By the way, food, water, and oxygen-wise, the Orpheus carries 30 days of uh, food, water, and oxygen, and also 30 days of waste capacity. So that's, uh, it's meant for long duration missions to begin with. Uh, so plenty of buffer and one thing we're going to have to test is the electric charge situation. So we'll take a good look at that. Anyway, um, I think I want to spend some upgrade points uh, to increase the speed on the second slot. It seems, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. So we've got three available upgrade points. I don't know where we got those from. And uh, let me get a few more. There we go. That's two thirds of rate two. And how's our R and D going? So we've got advanced stage combustion next, and hydrolox engines. People asked about that. People asked about the the when I was gonna do three kerbals in a pod too. So we're doing that. Astronaut complex is in thirty days. That's good. Um, but we could definitely speed some of this up. This is pretty darn horrible. So let's spend some more points, uh, some more funds to get points. Ah, okay, I'll, I'll keep it at this. I don't want to go below 1.7 million on the funds right now. Okay, and I'm not going to queue up any more technology to research. We've got quite a long backlog there anyway. Okay, Mars Fuel Depot. Okay, well, we have a bit of a problem here. I tried trans... Uh, time warping to our uh, proper launch window and uh, I think we destroyed the launch pad. I don't know if it's safe to still time warp. Mm, no, it's non-physical. I was trying to get to relative inclination of zero degrees. So this is our Mars fuel depot. I think we're gonna have to pay for some repairs after this. That's sad. That's not my fault, that's just the game wiggling the rocket a bit. A rocket we've launched quite a few times like this, but oh well. Anyway, in other news, we did finish up uh, advanced stage combustion, so we do have the advanced uh, NK engines, NK-33, NK-43, and also the NK-31 is probably the one I'm going to use because 39 doesn't have gimbling. And I like gimbling. Gimbling is helpful when one engine goes out, for instance. I don't know about the benefits of them. Well, there's a burn time benefit. That's nice. But we'll have to assess how beneficial they really are. Um, some people have some interesting ideas about how much of an advance the NK-33s were over the NK-15s. It wasn't that big a jump, I feel. But we'll see. Uh, it's wiggling a bit. It's wobbling. Uh, SAS, throttle up. This gotta be a dodgier than usual launch. Ignition. And launch. Well, we're going up, sort of. 
Whoa. Yeah. Okay, I think it's good. It's good. Okay, we are halfway through the first stage and uh, more than halfway through the boosters. We have oscillations, let me throw them down here. Whoa, serious oscillations. I think this has a lot to do with the payload and what it's attached to the... Yeah, something to do with the payload. That causes... this is pretty bad. Um, I'm gonna turn Smart ASS off and hope that... If I... oh. We have a failure, I think. Wait, no, we haven't disconnected yet. I'm just gonna not let any stability happen. Yeah. Yeah. This is bad. We're somewhat deviating from prograde because I don't have SAS on. Trying to run out the boosters. Why didn't one engine fail? It'd be much nicer if one engine failed. Right? Okay, separation. Uh, oh, okay. One engine decided to have uh, lower performance right when the coupling happened. That's great. That's good timing right there. Um, it looks like it was a center wrench. Oh, we've got wiggles. We got wiggles. SAS off. Okay, I'll, I'll just. Oh, wow. We gotta go wow when it looks like that. Once we get the, rid of the fairing, we'll have to see exactly what part is attaching things. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, uh, we've lost one engine. Still no big deal. Oh, uh, we've lost two engines. Actually, still no big deal. And lost performance on that one. Lost another one. Lost another one. Wow, okay. Maybe we should just let go of this stage now. It's because we throttled down and we're past the rate of burn time. Okay, well, set. And addition. Oh, food. Okay. <laughs> I, I was thrall down still. Good thing these are kind to me this time. Jeez, lots of issues. Uh, hey. I need fairings. Where are my fairings? There they are. Uh, we don't need to go down. I don't suppose I could use SAS now, can I? Nope, it's gonna start wiggling again. Okay, I'll just have to manually do it while doing everything else. Okay, fearing. Okay. It seems to be wiggling from here, not where the fairings are. It's it's the this is the centaur stage. So it's the RL10. Or no, but the RL10s are in a set of six. It's whatever is at the center. Connecting the Centaur stage, we'll have to take a look. Not Centaur stage, um, S4 stage. We're gonna have a higher Apple Apsis than I originally intended, mainly because I want to have enough time for the third stage. Okay, that stage is fine, set. Add ignition. We definitely have enough delta V, that's not a problem. But you can see the thrust weight ratio is only 0.6, that's why we have to keep the time to apoapsis up. And if we keep the time to apoapsis up, we need to keep the apoapsis up too. Yeah, even with this acceleration, I'm not gonna trust SAS and Smart ESS at this point. Not until we separate off this stage. 
I mean, maybe if I told it to control from here. I mean, uh, uh, Saturn instrumentation. Oops, deviating. Saturn instrumentation, it'll be all right. Now, once we get uh, better Hydrolox engines, that'll be good. Because this can obviously lift more than what we've got in the S4 stage right now. And that's because the RL10s are limited to a 7 minute and 50 second burn time. Once we get RL10s with a longer burn time, we can have uh, heavier payloads being sent to Mars on this rocket. Okay, getting pretty close to orbit here. Despite all the steering issues, we now just have a relative inclination with respect to the moon of one degree. And we'll let this stage stay in orbit because I wanted to use all of its fuel. Because I think, I don't know how tight our fuel margins are on the next stage, but I trust they're tight enough to justify using as much fuel as we can. Okay. And actually, let's take a look. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, maybe I should have even boosted out with this instead of shutting down so early. A higher, a higher apoapsis might have been advisable. But now they're off, and we can't res restart these. Uh, next variants we will be able to, but this variant we cannot. So let's get rid of it. Okay. And so, yep, it's not a lot of Delta V to get to the moon, not to the moon, to Mars, but we will see. Let's extend panels and do all the basic business, and then we'll plot for Mars. Well, annoyingly enough, it looks like if we had continued boosting with the third stage, uh, our apoapsis would have been in a good position uh, to help us with our transfer, so we really could have used that Delta V. Oh well. Yep. Uh, after all the complications of launch, I guess I just didn't think about that. Okay. Well, we're we've not got the best sort of situation right now, and the main reason is because the moon is getting in our way, and making it very touchy to try and adjust our orbit. Um, the best I can plot ahead of time is to have this maneuver node out here after 43 days to correct our inclination. I don't know, I, I wish the moon would be a little bit more helpful on the whole inclination thing, but it's tough to get it to cooperate really. Not if we're going to eject from out here, maybe with a mid-course correction we could get something, but yeah, it's all very touchy. I think I'm just going to go with this and see what happens. Uh, altogether, it's going to cost us maybe 4,200 meters per second, which is rough, but, you know, it is a fuel depot, so we'll see. All right, I, I'd rather do this one than wait another orbit. Uh, it's basically a time constraint thing. It's too bad we can't plot maneuvers, um, you know, without time proceeding, because I could really use that right now. Yep. Uh, if I could pause time, I could definitely make a better maneuver, but we've got boil off, and I don't want to wait, so let's just um, gonna say node. Uh, the fuel seems settled, so why don't we just have the RL-10s do the turning for us. Throttle up, and ignition. So taking a look, it looks like it's one of these Thor avionics units. That's why we had wobble, because uh, we were attached to that. Those Thor Avionics units, not very good to attach to. I might have to, because th that, that, that's an important piece of information, because our, our, um, our Orpheus, our Orpheus spacecraft, uh, has one of those at the bottom of it that is attached to the rest of our rocket. So maybe that's not such a good idea. Oh, we've had the loss of one engine. Um, the other five should be able to compensate. That's why we have so many engines. 
but it is gonna push push their burn time, right? Okay, we've got loss of performance in one engine. Looks like that one. Yeah, and it's a specific impulse problem too. But I don't dare turn it off just yet. Loss in another one. Want to milk this all out? Okay, all right, fair enough. Separation and ignition of our next stage, and hopefully this will get us also in orbit around Mars. So that's the trickier business. I don't know how much fuel we'll actually be able to deliver to Mars. This tank is locked. With it unlocked, we probably have a obscene amount of delta V. Let's take a look. For some reason, I can't unlock it. Oh, we have no connection now. Okay. Why doesn't it show electric charge? Uh-oh. Oh, no. You mean... <sighs> Alright, uh, I did that thing. Oh, nuts. No electric charge? on anything. See, the problem is I'm so used to probe cores having electric charge that I forgot the Thor avionics unit doesn't have any. And so there's no electric charge on this vehicle at all. Well, this will be an interesting deep space rescue <laughs> adventure if we ever want to try and grab this again. Oh, that's a waste. These fuel depots, I swear, every time I build a fuel depot, something horrible happens to it. I should call them something else. Whenever I call them a fuel depot, if it's a spent, you know, if it's a sort of a partially spent stage that happens to be floating around, that's fine. If I call it a space dug, it's fine. Call it a fuel depot, though. It's a kiss of death for these things. Okay, well, good thing we're going to be trying the Orpheus uncrewed because um, after this one I think that's probably necessary for safety's sake alright let's turn to that okay well alright uh, I had totally forgotten about the launch pad so we've brought out the test of our Orpheus system and uh, the launch pad is still wrecked but let me bring it out here so I'm not too sure what to think about that. Is it gonna let me launch? Let's find out. Throttle up. SAS is on. Okay, again, no crew. We're gonna try this uncrewed first and see if that works at all. Remember with the Gemini capsule we weren't able to it seemed. Uh, though subsequently we've been able to control the Gemini capsule without any crew inside. But anyway, here we go. Uh, we don't have to go into any particular orbit. We just need to go up and then come back down again. Uh, the contract will want uh, I mean, a minimal sort of thing. Periapsis above 200 kilometers, apoapsis below 375, and they have to stay in orbit for 14 days. We also have uh, another crew count record of at least three crew sort of thing there. We've also got a crew duration record for 30 days with at least one Kerbal. This pod can handle that as well because it's got 30 days of food, water, and oxygen. Though uh, for that mission, I think I'll just have two Kerbals just for safety's sake and give us a little bit of buffer. All right, so yes, ignition. Yeah, it works. And launch. So maybe you guys can tell me what the benefit of fixing the launch pad is. Or should I just keep it the way it is. I don't know. I'm uh, building a newer version of this system. Uh, here we have the Orpheus on the Nico 606A and it's 606A because we've replaced the engines with the advanced stage combustion engines instead of these. So NK33s and NK31s. That doesn't really give us uh, I mean, really, the only real benefit is that we have two ignitions on the upper stage for each of the engines then. Uh, there's no practical benefit for this system because 
um, we have to keep the thrust weight ratio up in order to maintain our buffer and the NK31s don't have they have a longer burn time but they don't have more thrust so as you can see uh, if we bring out our Delta V stats here sorry for cluttering this up um, the second stage starts off at 1.13 thrust to weight ratio and we need to keep that above one for redundancy's sake so we can't really increase the burn time by that much and therefore we can't increase the Delta V by that much not on this system we could potentially uh, have a four engine upper stage but that actually reduces redundancy and also the thrust so we can't fit more engines to increase the thrust it's really packed up there as it is also on the advanced version I've moved uh, Thor AVI oh, well I've removed the Thor AVI unit from that one since um, all we need is the Delta AVI unit at the top to remote control the pod if necessary uh, we only need the Thor ABI student if we want to also control the service module uh, without any kerbals on. And after this test, we won't need that functionality. Kerbals should always be on board. We will thrall down here. The NK31s don't thrall down. That's another issue. Unlike the NK19s. Sep? Uh-oh. Uh, is it gonna set? Okay, so apparently this pod also has the same problem as the. Uh, I'm gonna try and like. Can I control from here maybe? Uh, no connection to send the command on. Hmm. So yeah, it has the same problem. I wonder what happens if I say abort. Can I, get, I can't send the abort signal either. I wonder why they put the protective shield on the capsule if it can deal with this kind of horror. Shouldn't it like automatically? Hold on, let me turn off smart. Air. It should. Uh, well, that decoupler is still on, but it should still automatically orient the other way, surely. Right? No, I guess this is very pointy. Also, descent mode isn't on. Right. Well, so let's try that with a crew, shall we? Taking a look at the launch pad, um, it says repair for 60,000 well, pounds, but uh, we'll, we'll call it funds. Um, it says out of service, but we just proved that wrong. But maybe it'll give us better, but, but will it uh, stop us from actually launching? Well, the Orpheus will be done in 41 days, so maybe that's enough time to repair it. I don't know. Um, when is the contract over with, by the way? We need to keep an eye out for that. Okay, well, maybe we'll be able to repair in that kind of time. Oh, wait. Did it just... Wait, I th uh, it's not like the other building things? It's not like the other building things. Okay, good. Well, that's a relief. One thing that occurs instantaneously is repairing the launch pad. Okay. That's a heck of a Kerbal looking rocket, I have to say. It just is. It looks very Kerbal. Alright, Thrall is up. SAS is on. Um, we have... Uh, Underfueled the service module appropriately, I believe. There's so much that's dodgy about this. There's a sudden instrumentation here. Yeah, there's so much dodgy about this because we don't actually know whether the Apollo command module re enters properly. But since we can't control it without a Kerbal inside, what can we do? So here we go ignition. And off we go. New engines, remember. Let's see about the data units. Yeah, we are collecting data units. 
Um, but we're not too bad off. It started out at 60, uh, 6,600. And the daily units on the NK31 is close to 9,000. Mean time before failure on these, 222 minutes for the NK31's 662 units. We'll just see in practical terms what that really means by, you know, how many engines go out per launch. So that's one benefit maybe these upgraded engines have. And that's the, that's the benefit that I thought they would have. It's not better performance, but better reliability. As far as I know, the benefit of the NK33s and the 43s was an improved reliability over the NK15s and NK15Vs. Okay, separation. Ignition. Alright. That's gone reasonably well. And now let's get, get rid of the launch escape system. Off it goes. Oh, we still throttle down. Let's not do that. Even though the fact that these engines can run for a stage time of 10 minutes means that even if we throw down, we shouldn't have the problems that we've had before. Oh yeah, they don't throttle. I forgot. Right. These do not throttle. Must remember that. Speaking of which, what is our maximum thrust to weight ratio? Oh, well that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Good thing we're leaving some fuel in. Yeah, the fact that these don't throttle does make that... Um, I think I can shut half of them off, though. There should be an act... No, no, I, uh, yeah, I, I should have that action group. We'll have to check in a bit. Yeah, we can turn half of them off. Okay, let's see if I remember which action group turning half of them off was. Okay, there we go. Action group 9. So now we are on only three engines, and that'll save us from monumental thrust-to-weight ratio and g-forces. It does put us in a bind if one of the engines fail, though. So maybe I should wait until we reach 4G's next time, until we do this. But, but, on the other hand, we can actually shut these three off. If one of these fail, we can shut all three off and use the other three, because we do have the restart capability. We have one ignition remaining. So, that's a, that's a plan. Why is it wiggling so... Oh, we've got loss of uh, performance in one. It looks like just loss of thrust. 200 kilonewtons. Uh, the specific impulse is still what it is, and so we're a little bit off, but things are compensating reasonably well. I do need to pitch up more now, though, because of that. Minimum orbit is 200 kilometers, so we might as well get going up again. We should let this stage re-enter, I think. So, shut down. Alright, that stage will re-enter. And that should be okay. Separation. Alright, and ignition of these. Okay. These gimbal. Let's get the solar panels out. Oh, that's too high on the apoapsis, is it? Uh, just under. Let's coast to apoapsis for a bit. Otherwise, we'll go over the limits that have been set for us. Okay, solar panels are good, and electric charge is replenishing, but the question is whether we'll be good on electric charge on the nighttime side as well. We do have four fuel cells, so that's a total of uh, three kilowatts generating there. These, I think, are each 400 watts, so that's 3.2 kilowatts there. We carry quite a lot of uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for the fuel cells. I don't know if it's 30 days worth, but hopefully. Um, we'll have to see about all that. 
I thought I had an action group the antennae on the same thing as the solar panels, but apparently not. But we don't really need antennae right now anyway, so that's all right. Well, we're in orbit. Got 1,000 meters per second here. A fair thrust weight ratio right now, too. I mean, like 0.5-ish. So if we really needed to ditch the second stage and go to orbit on these, it might be possible after a certain point. If it's not possible, of course, we'll just try and slow down with these and then ditch into the ocean. Okay, let's make orbit. <laughs> We need to get above 200 kilometer periapsis. That should do it. Lots of little messages, just debris. We could probably recover the uh, first stage. Crew count record of three crew, we've completed that. Yep. It doesn't require us to bring them back down, apparently. Mars Fuel Depot, alas. Okay. So now we have launched and it's counting down the 14 days. We will stick with it. We're not going to do the 30 day record this time. So uh, yeah, let me turn RCS off for the time being. Let's see what our electric charge situation is long term. Okay, um, that might be good enough. Sun. Uh, okay, that's not quite what I want though. Yeah, more like that. And we need SAS on for this to work. Okay. So let's see how much we recharge on the daylight side and whether it fills it up. If so, that's excellent. We don't even need our fuel cells. Nah. I'd say we lose about, well, yeah, we lose about 500 per orbit. So let me do the math uh, to see how long we can stay in low Earth orbit just with our solar panels, no fuel cells running. Okay, 147 orbits, and our orbital period is an hour and 30 minutes. Very nice. Nine days and whatever 0.875 days is, let's see. Nine days and four and a half hours. Okay, well, we definitely need to run our fuel cells then. Yep, just on one fuel cell we can manage this. As you can see, food, water, oxygen seems to be in good, good situations. 30 days as planned. Alright, so I'll come back to you once we've time warped 14 days. Alright, well it says orbit's completed. We may fire retros when ready. And then we have to land or splash down on Earth. Um, as far as our resources are concerned, we used, uh, let's say, well, we reused less than a quarter of our hydrogen and oxygen. So running one fuel cell, we've got uh, two months worth. Um, so as long as our solar panels are there, we've got two months worth. And uh, running two fuel cells, we have one month's worth. And otherwise, all four fuel cells, if for some reason we like lose most of our solar panels, uh, we would have enough for two weeks. So that's pretty good. Uh, it looks a little bit unbalanced. I guess there's some minor hydrogen boil off because I thought I had the mix right. Well, here goes the tough part though. Do we trust the Apollo command module to work? Sixty-eight kilometers should be fine for coming back down at this site. I don't need to do any serious testing of this. We'll wait until we're... I don't know, uh, I think we should, can dump the service module now. But the RCS on here is... Hmm... A question mark, let's say. Let's leave it hanging around for a little bit longer. Okay. Here it goes. Alright. I'm unlocking these fuels. And I'm gonna just manually turn it. 
See, the thrust replacement on the Apollo command module is a bit interesting. I'm always curious about it. Seems alright for this. Hopefully. Okay, surface negative relative velocity. Let's see how much... Oh, it sure uses a lot of that. Okay. Um, let's just have SAS hold it then. And descent mode active. Okay, we are now under a hundred kilometers. And it's sort of rocking back and forth a bit. Our MMH and N204 not holding out in, in the best way possible. I don't want to get rid of SAS because, you know, it's sort of holding our orientation. But, yeah, I might want to pack some more MMH and N204 in the command module itself. There is room for it. Uh, there was actual uh, leftover volume in the command module available. Also, if I really wanted to, we could reduce how much uh, food and water is in here. Move that into the service module section. It's probably more legit to move the water than the food. We should probably have all the food in here. But I can imagine a water pipe from the service module section up to the command module. I'm sure they had one because they had the fuel cells in the service module and that generated water. Okay, we have some apparent heating here. And actually, uh, I think I undershot a bit because we're just now crossing over, well, we're reaching Baja California there. That's the Gulf of California there. So we'll be over Mexico. We might land in Mexico at this rate. Our MMH and N204 is really drastically low right now. Less than 10% remaining as we are now approaching 1G and 6,100 meters per second at 64 kilometers in altitude. Now the this avionics package is connected to the forward heat shield so in theory when it uh, decouples it should decouple the controller as well. Not the best sort of idea but there's nowhere else to put it. We're about to run out of RCS. Hopefully the sheer force of the atmosphere will keep us oriented right, I don't know. There we go, that's the end of it. Now we are starting to roll over a bit. This is not a good time. Yeah, this is not a good time to be rolling over. 2Gs. is the opposite of what we should be doing with descent mode. Four thousand meters per second. Three G's. I really wish descent mode could help us keep orientation roll orientation as well. But no that's definitely the area of the RCS. 4G's five G's Not too sure what it would have been without the awkward rolling at this point, but it looks like we'll peak out at about six G's and a bit. Oh actually it might make it to seven G's. Uh six point eight. Okay. Alright, well there's no need to keep any sort of orientation thing on because we don't have any way of controlling it. We just need to turn the scent mode off once we get below the speed of sound. We didn't use much ablator as expected, but we faced a lot more g-forces potentially because of the lack of RCS. Hopefully. We are over Mexico, I believe. Yep, smack dab in the middle. 
I think that must be Mexico City. So we're north of that. Okay, and descent mode off. Maybe we should have uh, separated the forward heat shield before turning it off, but let's see. Separate forward heat shield. Ooh, that does come off with some vigor. And I'm going to arm the parachutes. Now, I wasn't able to tweak the parachutes. I, I looked at the info, and it didn't give me an option to change their characteristics at all. So, if they don't work, that's not my fault. I, I tried to tweak them and couldn't. So hopefully they're just ideally suited for this pod. Which means they're not ideally suited for anything else, which is why I didn't add anything to it. We are over terrain though, I hope it... Okay, it seems to know that. Otherwise it would have waited another 3 kilometers to open up. Alright, we have full parachute deployment, but we're at 11.3 meters per second. That's pretty heavy. I mean, I mean, I guess we're pretty heavy considering... But the original mass of the capsule was 5.5 tons. We're, we're at 6 tons. And 11.2 meters per second seems really bad. We might have to put some additional parachutes on. These were it, by the way. I didn't see any other Apollo parachutes. So I hope 11.1 is okay for them. Seems rough. Especially on the ground. Oh, I didn't even notice when we hit the ground. Okay, well it looks like it's alright. Very good, let's recover. Okay. We got, obviously, that back. We got our Kerbals back. Okay, I was worried that I wasn't going to come back to this screen because it was in the alternate view that sometimes is bugged out. Um, Alright, but successful entry wasn't us. Fine, we didn't do a successful re-entry. Or did it just not... Oh, uh, oh, the successful re-entry has to be uncrewed. Well, I was going to do that. I was hoping to do that with the test. But uh, apparently we're going to have to do some other successful re-entry uncrewed. But at least we got the big one done. And we managed, despite two failures, uh, to actually satisfy a contract. And end on a positive note after this. Crew count record of 10 crew. Wow. They really jump on you after uh, 3 crew, don't they? That'd be, that's quite a lot of crew you're talking about there. Interesting. Destination Earth, the Moon, Venus, Mars, the Sun, Phobos, or Deimos. Okay. Well, we'll have to look into that at some other time. For now, I think I'm satisfied with what we've done here. And uh, it looks like our reputation is above zero, if I'm reading that right. So moving right along, we'll see what we can do next time. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.